is Timothy Kane, and I currently work as the Associate Director for Inclusion Initiatives at the George Washington University. Uh, in that capacity, I oversee two primary areas of student outreach. I work with our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, and queer students. And I also work with students of diverse faith backgrounds, uh, including atheists, humanists, and secular students. Uh, my background, um, I identify as a gay man, um, and I also have a background academically in theology and justice and peace. It's been a real honor coming here. Um, I feel like in my sort of humble way, I've tried to be a citizen diplomat, uh, meeting with lots of folks, listening, sharing, um, telling stories about the work that I do back home and, and hearing some great work that has been done here, um, especially around LGBTIQ diversity and inclusion. And uh, yeah, I think there's been a lot of learning, a lot of um, laughing, and a lot of um, great connections and relationship building. I would say I've been actually incredibly inspired um, by the role of the U.S. Embassy here in New Zealand. Um, I feel quite um, proud that my tax dollars are being spent, especially around LGBT IQ diversity and inclusion initiatives, um, and especially initiatives that do outreach with um, sort of an intersection of identities. So, for example, at the spectacular uh, student conference that was held and sponsored and, and funded by the embassy, um, there was significant attention um, put out to um, include especially underrepresented students of color from outer islands and from um, the Maori uh, heritage. And so to see the, the investment in um, folks that have an intersection of marginalized and underrepresented identities was incredibly um, inspiring for me. Well, I've had uh, the very, very good fortune to chat with and meet with many people from different universities here in Auckland. And two of the, two of the uh, initiatives that I spoke about and described that we do at the George Washington University that seem to be of most interest to folks here uh, included our LGBTIQ mentor program. So we have um, out and, and proud LGBTIQ faculty and staff at our university and we train them and then we match them with um, our undergraduate, primarily undergraduate, but also graduate students who are seeking um, an LGBTIQ mentor. So that's one thing that um, a lot of people express a lot of interest in. Another thing is uh, building an alumni um, LGBTIQ network um, to, you know, to access the expertise, the wisdom um, of uh, alumni and to provide that for and with students who are currently um, matriculated in university and also to use them, um, well to invite them to share their financial resources to support uh, additional LGBT IQ initiatives. I think the George Washington University has been uh, incredibly committed to the intersectionality of um, LGBT IQ identities with racial and ethnic identities, with social economic identities, with faith identities, with ability identities, and we understand that there's a need to um, welcome and invite students to bring all of who they are, all of their incredibly flexible and resilient uh, identities to the institution when they come to study, um, because that's when we're a stronger institution and our educational mission is uh, most fulfilled. Yeah, I've been invited to um, travel to Spain um, by the U.S. Embassy there, and um, my area of expertise is um, has been professionally in the area of academic service learning, and so, but it's been really interesting because um, we have an out, a, a gay uh, identified out uh, U.S. ambassador to Spain, and he and his staff have asked me to also do some LGBTIQ diversity training there. So it's gonna be half about LGBT um, IQ diversity and half about academic service learning to really engage uh, students in the community through their academic experience. And I'm really, really excited to 
have an invitation and opportunity as well. You know, I was chatting with some folks about the incredibly generous, gracious, and hospitable welcome I've received here, and I really wanted to thank everyone here in New Zealand and especially at the embassy. Um, I had a few logistical challenges with my travel here. Um, I just wanted to maybe share one quick story. I ended up um, forgetting to tell my bank that I was visiting New Zealand and my credit card and my debit card ended up getting frozen and I was at, um, at an LGBTIQ event, a gala, the first night that I arrived and um, I offered to uh, buy the Council General a drink um, just to sort of share in the celebration. And at the bar, both my credit card and my debit card were declined, and I was in a little bit of a panic. And um, a perfect stranger, a Kiwi standing right next to me, just said, you know, put it on my tab. And so honestly, I, I just feel like that kind of generosity, that kind of hospitality is what I wish for myself and for everyone. And it was just such an um, incredibly wonderful, sort of homecoming for me to, to have that experience. And during my last presentation, I was given a wonderful <laughs> little memento of the um, sheep legacy here in New Zealand. And so I'm really excited. And I've already named her Dolly uh, because Dolly Parton was performing here for the last couple of days. So thank you, New Zealand. And I'm just excited, just so excited to get to know everyone here. I'm excited to have Dolly. <laughs> Thank you so much.